Hey everyone, welcome to Ellis Mowers. I appreciate y'all watching the channel as always. Uh, in the garage today we have a Troy built pony. Had plenty of these on the channel re uh, all model years essentially. This one's one of the newer ones that I've had. This is a 2018 model year. And uh, it's got the 42 inch deck, 17 and a half horsepower Briggs and Stratton engine on it. And it has uh, a very common issue with these Briggs singles. It has a broken compression release in the camshaft. So we've got to take that off and get that thing situated in this video here. Really good condition. I got this mower on a trade. I got a two for one trade. I had a uh, 3750 watt Coleman generator and did a two for one trade. Got this and a Poland Pro riding mower. The Poland Pro's in a little bit worse shape and we'll need a lot, uh, decent amount of TLC to get that one going. This one should be a quick turnaround though if I can just pop a cam in it and be done with it. Everything else on it looks to be in pretty good shape. It's not even five years old hardly so uh, we got that going on and that's what we'll mostly be doing in this video is just taking this engine off, putting a new camshaft in it, slapping it back on and uh, seeing it should run good for us. So let's go ahead and get started. If you have any questions about this video feel free to reach out to me ellis at ellismowers.com or at ellismowers09 on Instagram and Facebook. I'll give you a walk around of the mower, and then we'll start putting the camshaft in it. I've already kind of did a preliminary diagnosis, and the guy said exactly what I thought was wrong with it. He said, he said it would take all its might to crank over, and most people think, oh, it's a bad starter when you do that. No, it's not a bad starter. It's just a bad compression release, and I think you might have put the wrong starter. Yeah, we'll get that off right there before long because that's a, supposed to be a metal gear and not a plastic gear. So we'll get that off, change that out. But that's not the reason why it's not starting. It's because y'all know what it does. I'll show it to you real quick. It's not going to kill the starter if I do this once. But what it'll do... You push the brake in. I got a good battery, and it's like a 375 cold cranking out. And it gets right there, and it won't go. I'm not going to pump it anymore because I don't want to mess that starter up. But that sometimes, if you're lucky, it's valves. Really lucky. But this is definitely a cam. He said it's been starting hard. Just all of a sudden started hard one day, and uh, what well, he has had going on with it. So, uh, rest of the mower real quick while we're looking at it. Looks to be in pretty decent condition. All the tires are holding air. Uh, seat's in good shape. It just needs a general wash. Nothing crazy ridiculous. And I think this might need blades. It does need blades. I have blades here. That, that may be the extent of it. Belts can't be so bad be four or five years old, so I'm not really worried about that. It's not getting caught on my belt's not getting caught under there. So that's a possibility too, but you see the deck try to move. I think we can get by with the deck belt that we have on it as well. So like I said, cam swap. Very easy. I think I got one in the cabinet here. A lot of people hate on putting Chinese cams in, but that's a carb, ain't it? This should be the camshaft kit. Yep. So, in this box, we've got all the goodies that we need. Gasket and all that good stuff. So, uh, let me get what I need to get to get this engine off. And we will start working on it. Alright guys, so I've already done a little bit of pre-work here. Uh, I do need to just, you don't have to, as long as you got the key switch off, but I'll disconnect the negative from the battery just so that we're all safe when it comes to that. Um, I've taken the headlights out, you just have to twist those right and they come off and just feed the wiring through. If you just leave the wiring like it is right there, you're fine. Um, just watch yourself and don't step on it. I've already sucked the oil out of the engine. And so what's left really, and it's really not that much left to do after that, after we've gotten all the engine covers and stuff like that off, um, you can just take the carb off with those two 10 millimeters. You don't necessarily have to take 
the you have to take the anti backfire solenoid off. You don't necessarily have to take anything else off here if you wanted to. Could take the carb off with a couple of seven sixteenths. Nothing crazy. There's a jet that's kind of stuck up there. I wonder if that's something going on. Uh, he's got a decent amount of gas in here for me already, so that's good too. You just gotta get your linkages off. You have your uh, throttle linkage and stuff right here. And the gov the thing is, the governor kind of feels weird. So I'm kind of like, uh, wonder if it's something's lodged inside the engine. Uh, we are gonna check the valves before we take it off, just in case. And I'll get to y'all at that point. But to get the engine off, uh, you've got to take your throttle cable off here, 5 sixteenths, your four bolts for the engine mounting bolts. And then you got to get your drive belt and your deck belt off. You have to pull this back, which looks like it's already been done for us. You just got to pull the deck belt off. And then lower this pulley or at least just unbolt it sometimes the drive belt will stay on if you're lucky if you put the park brake down it probably will if not putting that pulley back on is not that big of a deal then your other two mounting bolts on the side um, you can get by with just taking the exhaust bolts off of the engine as well for these spark plug all that can go come out together. I mean, it's nothing crazy. And then if you have to, the exhaust, I think, is bolted in. Is it bolted in? Or is it just hanging out there under this plate? This plate's just held on by four, uh, like 10 millimeters down there. So just a few bolts. We'll get the hood off here. Jack it up. Get my jack stand. I usually just jack it up by the thing on the bottom down here that holds the the deck the deck mount. Just get it lifted up a little bit so you can get under there. You can do this without taking the deck off too. Put that on jack stand. Then we'll take a look at get this that out of the way. We'll take a look at uh, the valves here first. Three eighths is usually what you need. All right. So let's see if we can get this off. I'm gonna grab some tools to get this valve cover off and we'll inspect the valves. They use these Briggs has started using this RTV, which is better than the gaskets that they used to use, but makes it harder to pop off when I'm looking to get the valve cover off. All right, guys, apart from old oil, I don't really see any issues with the valves. Yeah, all the push rods are intact. It just gets really, really tight right there. And that's in, in, indicative of, can't get them big words out, guys, of a bad compression release or something gone wrong internally. So while we've got this off, we'll take off this coil wire, feed it down through here. Also, underneath, you have your wire. Oop, there's a ground wire on this side. That's a 5 sixteenths, as well as your wire for so the ground wires. 
right here. You have to pull this wire through because it's under the, it kind of latches on in those tins on this engine. Just pull that through. And then there's another 5 sixteenths here for the throttle. It might be a quarter. No, 5 sixteenths. So we get that off, take our throttle cable off, give it a little bit of extra room there. Okay, so that, and then see if we can get the... carb off by just having to take the 10 mils off or the 3 8 okay so we can usually get by with just doing, being able to do this So that's that. We got the spring off. So this can just kind of hang out down here. It ain't going to do nothing bad or anything. You just kind of put it on the footwell there. Whatever you decide to do with it. And uh, she's ready to rock and roll on this side. The other side, I've got to grab. We can go ahead and dip the starter off because we're going to put another starter on it. Those are half inch. So, half inch. Jeez. I think it's dying on me. We'll get the one on this side loose, hopefully, with this. There we go. The one on this side's a little more difficult just because you can't get an impact in on it. But I've already disconnected. A lot of times what you can do is take a 7 16 or some needle noses, hook it onto this so that this terminal doesn't turn while you take the other 7 16 off on this side. We're going to unplug the coil wire because that's going to come off with the engine as well. I'm going to take these two bolts off right here. And then you have your two exhaust bolts right here, which are like a T40 or something like that. And once I get those off, then we should be good to go when it comes to uh, taking the mounting bolts off and taking off the pulley on the bottom down there. Well, we're getting close. We're literally one bolt away from getting this thing off. And I tell you, I don't really run across this much at all. Uh, we got all the exhaust bolts off. I missed that one in the front right there. So make sure you take that one in the front that attaches to the engine. Um, starter's still on it. I'll get that off in a second. But I got all the engine bolts, mounting bolts off. My hang-up is, and I don't really have an issue with these. It's usually just getting them off of the shaft. But that bolt right there is being stubborn for some reason. And so what I've done, I tried to heat it up. I tried to give it some lubricant. Doesn't want to go. The last thing I want to do is break it off. So what I'm going to do is I've got it lubed up. I'm going to let it sit overnight, come back the next day. Hopefully all that penetrating oil is penetrated into whatever rust is in that bolt. It's preventing it from backing out of here. And we'll see what we end up having. We'll see if it'll just pop off hopefully it will because if it doesn't that might be a pain mower's only four years old it shouldn't be giving me fits like this but you can kind of see where it has a bunch of corrosion and stuff on the block and whatnot too so um, it probably made its way down into that bolt and has kind of wedged it in place my impact my big impact usually gets it off but not in this case so i'm gonna let this simmer until tomorrow and then, hopefully, we'll be able to get this bolt off. And if so, we can pull this thing off and get it sitting up on the workbench there. And go ahead and just go to town on the cam compression release. 
not that difficult to do. You just got to take the whole shebang off to do it. And then we'll put it back on and probably honestly be done with this, save for some blades and some cleaning. Uh, so that'll be exciting to have another mower ready to go. Well, we're almost off. And I wanted to share something with y'all before we uh, continue here. Because uh, it's the first time I've ever ran into this issue. The issue involved a double stack pulley here. So a lot of times, again, this mower is only five years old, right out just under six. But the double stack pulley, a lot of times what you have is you can get the bolt off fairly easily, but then the double stack pulley won't come off for anything. And uh, I had the opposite problem here. The, the pulley was free, but the bolt wouldn't come off. And that impact that you see right there is like a, it's a 200 pound, pound feet of torque impact wrench, uh, impact tool. And take anything and everything off I need to on lawnmowers. If it doesn't take it off, it breaks it off. So, or it's going to break off. So this situation, I couldn't get it off with the impact. And so I'm like, oh no, I'm going to break this thing off. So I had Mrs. Ellis Mowers come out here put a breaker bar on the top here to try and, you know, counteract what I was doing underneath. But the problem is they turned the same way. And so it was trying to loosen this flywheel nut up. So plan C, I guess you could say, got a bunch of this braided universal rope here, made sure that the cylinder was down toward the bottom, shoved it in there and shoved a bunch. I'll see if I can pull it out for y'all. But I shoved a ton of this rope down here to get it out. Let me show you how much rope I had to shove in there. That's every bit of five and a half feet of rope that I shoved down in the cylinder. What that does is it'll bind up the cylinder up on the rope whenever it tries to come up um, from... The bottom of the cylinder stroke there or bottom of the cylinder whenever it's coming up for its compression stroke and it'll bind it up so i did that took a half inch i have a breaker bar right here for the because i thought i might need that but just took, just took a half inch ratchet and socket and it started barely moving and i'm like oh no i hope it doesn't break i hope it doesn't break and uh it started moving a little bit easier and a little bit easier and I noticed that the threads were getting further and further down the pulley was moving more and more and we got it off so now what we've got to do is take the half inch and we'll go ahead and take the engine off while I'm here let me put you on a tripod while I do this and I've got everything disconnected so it should just be able to take the two uh, the half inch bolts off I, I put two of them back on because I wanted to mount it while, while I was trying to do this and I think I already took them back off actually. So I think we can just get this thing off. Yeah, we should just be able to take it off now. I hope. Yeah, we're good. Put it right. Here. That's so much WD-40 on me. So we just put it right here. All I got to do now is turn it over on itself. Give y'all a weird look at that there. just gotta probably impeded all y'all's vision there you can see some of the corrosion and stuff already on this mower a little bit of oil right there but now it's just a matter of taking off these half inch ones here getting a rubber mallet tapping it 
getting it up. So let me see if I can set y'all up while I do this. Y'all see me do this a lot. I'm just going to take a half inch and my impact tool, get all these bolts out. I'll revisit y'all when we have, when we're about to take this cover off here for the sump. All right, guys. Well, I think Briggs and Stratton and Loctite have must have had a contract or something. Or Loctite was supposed to give them, you know, 10 times the supply they needed to. These bolts were even hard to get off. You can see some Loctite on them. Some of these were, I mean, look at that. They didn't want you to take these things off. They're like, we'll throw the compression release and we don't want you to change it. So we'll just Loctite these bolts. Never in my life. Looks like we almost even have a thread issue inside the shaft there. I'm not sure. We'll clean, I have to clean everything up. I might, before we put a new cam in it, I might see what might need to be done here. So we're just going to try and tap this thing off. I think I got all the bolts off, don't I? Yeah, it's just, of course, going to There we go. Let's see what's going on inside this thing. Of course, it also doesn't want to come off. There we go. My goodness. What on earth? You can see that the oil is not in the best shape. Governor, I wonder if the governor slipped off because it was just, didn't have a lot of movement. Now it does, so. Okay, governor, that seems to be working okay. Moment of truth with the camshaft, let's see. We're not too far, are we far off from the top dead center? No, we're not far off at all. Let's see if I can get this thing turned to top dead center real quick. Sorry, y'all. All right, TDC right there. Which makes this so that the camshaft should just be able to slide out and it does, and we have a broken compression release. Woohoo! All right. So let's fish for this, fish for the metal, metallic residuals in here, wherever they may be. see a couple of pieces down there. There's one. Second one is right, the pin is right here. Now I just need to find the little arm. Should be hiding in here somewhere. Hopefully not inside the cylinder. Huh? I'll feel it in there, which is good. Aha, there it is. Right there. So there's the compression release arm, little dowel pin. should be everything but we'll uh double check here see if we have any more oh. residuals in terms of metal got something down there something right there
So that looks like all the pieces. Got a spring there too. So, <laughs> this thing just shattered itself it looks like unfortunately. I think I got all the pieces. I'm going to sort around here a little bit more just to double check that I've got everything. And I think we're good. There's just a tiny bit of oil in it because I, well, you never, you never can get all the oil out of it. I sucked, I sucked it out. So as opposed to draining it. So that's that. Oh, I'm just a little concerned because it looks like some of the threads inside there have been compromised for the shaft. So I need to find the whole shaft, figure out that, clean that up a little bit, that shaft bolt. See how it threads in there. Clean that. Clean the inside of these up, and we'll get the new compression release in here, which is all in this box right here. So let me do a little bit of work, and we will get everything in. I like doing it like this because you can change out the lifters if you want to. Um, really doesn't make any difference, honestly. And uh, we'll get the uh, we'll get the valve. Uh, or we'll get the uh, camshaft in here very shortly after I do a little bit of cleaning here. So this, guys, this can get a little messy. What I have done already, and what a lot of people don't tell you is that it takes a while to clean this gasket material off of this seal here for the sump and cleaning out the engine. You can see I don't have it perfect, but it's mostly trying to get most of the all the debris and stuff out of there. Same thing with the actual sump itself, the cover. Just try and get this as clean as you can and then we'll put the gasket on so you can see it takes up a decent amount of the workbench here's the residuals of the cam if i haven't already shown y'all and now we just get to take goodies out of the box and put them on this engine so let's get started here We have the lifters, which ended up taken out because when I cleaned the, cleaned the mower, cleaned the engine anyways, I put it on its side on a pan to let a bunch of stuff drain out. And I think we got most of it. Never can get these things perfectly clean inside. So we put the lifters in. Now we put the new camshaft in. You can see it has the compression release on it. I've had decent luck with the Chinese ones so far. I mean, look at the Briggs one. It didn't last five years. So, like, you know, you get another Briggs one that lasts five years, or you take a chance on a Chinese one that might probably do the same thing, honestly. Uh, let me get, I'm getting it lined up with top dead center right now. Come on, buddy. There we go. So we've got that lined up. We've got the lifters in. You may see that this one has a little indent on the end, whereas the OEM one does not. Reason being is that they're the same camshaft, except that one can also accommodate an oil pump if it's got a oil filter and pressure lube engine. They will serve the same purpose on this application. So now we've got the new sump cover here. 
That's about one of the only negatives of buying these Chinese kits is that these sump covers come in just mangled mess here. And so you kind of have to finagle everything together here and we just have to figure out what way it goes and then we'll be good. So as you can see everything is just all mangled up on this gasket and that's that's every single one of these things so it's just a matter of putting that on getting the governor on here and I think the governor might have been off of this a little bit actually is the governor chewed up on this thing give me just a second y'all see that right there I think the governor got chewed up for some reason let me check I want to check other governors <laughs> I have a couple in the cabinet here. Figure out a better way to get this mess straightened out. And I'll rejoin you once I got everything kind of on here. We're going to put the sump cover back on, all right? I'll be right back. All right, guys. Definitely uh, sheared the teeth off of the governor. So I found a new governor. As you can see, it actually has teeth on it off of an engine that I was going to have to take the sump cover off anyways. It's that 14 and a half that was on the Murray that I thought had governor issues, but it really doesn't. It just has something else going on with it. Now, if we put this together and it still has governor issues, then... Huh. You know that's probably not good. Uh, let's see. Governor check, camshaft check, lifter check, gasket check. Everything checks off. Let's put this back on. It's just going to go back on like, uh, let's see how it goes back on. Like this. So what we need to do, ooh, ouch. Well, we've got everything kind of up like this. Take all these bolts and push it down a little bit more than that. Take all these bolts and make sure they line up with the holes of the gasket. That way we get the gasket on nice and flush. This will take a few minutes, so I'll probably just go do this off camera. But we're just making sure everything lines up here. Well, we're getting back together, thankfully. Uh, ran into a little bit of a snag because when I put everything back on and turned the flywheel, I heard crunching sounds. I'm like, what is that? Then I remembered back to the D110 John Deere I had that I tore apart the whole engine because of bad flywheel magnets. So we didn't have not one, not two, but three flywheel magnets come off of the flywheel on this thing. Crazy. I haven't cracked the code as to how to work, fix that. Apparently, it's a chronic issue with this particular Briggs, a 215700. And uh, what I'm going to do is put this flywheel on it. And hopefully, that will allow it to continue to charge the battery. Should. It did come off, and it's the same part number. The magnets are a little bit bigger, I think, because of, well, it couldn't be because of a voltage regulator. But uh, this came off of, I think, that D110. It's my best option, guys. Not, not particularly happy with it. Uh, now, we've got also to get this uh, engine on. We've got it back on. Need to put the flywheel on. I found a starter with the correct teeth. I, obviously, I could have swapped the teeth off, but this that one sounded a little bit... Uh, 
um, noisy. This one sounds a lot better. So we're going to roll with this one. Valves are adjusted 5 8 and a T20 will get you your adjustments on the valves. Got them about 5 thousandths on the intake and the exhaust. And then it's a matter of putting things back together. I got to find that bolt. I don't know what happened to that bolt. But uh, what I am going to do before I even put oil and stuff in it, I think we got enough lubricant in it. I'll get the flywheel back on it. We're going to try and turn it over a couple of revolutions just to make sure that, the, that everything inside the engine is working before I go through the process of putting oil in it and cranking it up and all that good stuff. So let me get to, let me go to town on it. It's basically, it comes off just the way it came on. As long as you keep your hardware and stuff in order, it should be fairly easy. And uh, I'll meet y'all whenever it's time to attempt to turn this thing over. Well, I think it's time to start it up. Put the car back on. I don't have the engine cover back on. We'll get to that in just a minute. Uh, I did confirm that it does turn over before I did the whole oil and put the carbon stuff on. This linkage seems a little weird, almost like somebody tried to bend it. I had to bend it a different way so that it actually has play with the governor. You see that? Before I had it bent, it didn't really have a lot of play with the governor. So I was a little concerned about that. Uh, everything seems to be working like it's supposed to. Choke, throttle, starters turning, uh, plugs back in it, adjusted the valves, put all the exhaust bolts and stuff back on. So I'm going to crank this thing up and we'll see if it starts and runs like it's supposed to. I'm hoping, like I said, that wild card is that governor because um, it was running wide open on the 14 and a half that I took it off of, but I think it was a carb issue where the screw... The set screw was in all the way, and it was just running wide open. Uh, I always get nervous when this when we start these things up for the first time because you have a lot of time in it, and you hope that your work is good. So let's see what we've got. happened but y'all just saw it whatever it did holy cow what was that is that another flywheel magnet could be another flywheel magnet guys What in the world? It just dead stopped. For some reason. Oh man. That sounds like something inside. That thing is running good too. Yeah, it's something inside it. Oh man. Oh. That's not good. Let's see what happened, I guess. I'll take the plug off. It's running. It was running good, and then it just went crunch, just like it locked up on something. Let's see what happened here. Hmm.
Interesting. I think it threw the rod. There's no way in the world that it just threw the connecting rod. After all I did, all the work that I did right there, and it's gonna do that. Hmm. I guess I'm at the point that I need to take the cylinder head off of this to see what happened. Oh. Well, one other one thing I can do, I guess, is put this back on. You could hear it. It wasn't knocking or smoking or anything. We had just put a brand new oil in it too. Let's see. Yeah, check that out, guys. That's unbelievable. There's no compression. One other thing I can look at, I'll jack the front of this up. Oh! You win some, you lose some, I guess. I mean... when it blew the head gap or the um, camshaft the first time took the governor with it it probably caused some crunchies yeah the valves are turning the camshaft is good connecting rod went Oh boy. Alrighty. Sorry, I was a little frustrated. I didn't show it to y'all once I jacked it up. But you can see. Oh, Briggs. Ugh. I guess I'll drain the oil out of this thing and see what the heck happened. Oh. It's just really frustrating. Because I thought I was going to be done with this mower today. And then I crank it up and it just... I even checked in there to see if there was any debris and stuff left. And I didn't see any. So, uh, Might as well get the cylinder head off and just see what happened. Uh, see if there's any debris in there that I missed or... Something along those lines, and just see what we end up with here. Let me drain the oil back out. Well, doesn't this just make you sick? I'm turning it, and of course it's nothing. Spent all hours. Gosh, I spent an hour in itself trying to get that bolt off the bottom. And another couple hours, you know, doing the whole swaparoo here with the cam. Just for it to run 10 seconds and annihilate the cam, um, connecting rod. <sighs> Doesn't that just make you sick to your stomach? Plan is, I mean, y'all see what's going on. I might, I might not even open it up at this point. 
could use that sump gasket and see if the cam's good still. At this point, I mean, I've got this 18 horse Craftsman, or this Craftsman that doesn't have any deck hardware or anything on it. Got the 18 horse Briggs on it. 17 and a half, whatever. Runs good to be a direct swap. Probably going to go that route just so I can have that mower done. Because I'm quite honestly getting frustrated because it seems like all these Briggs that are the new one, the new ones from like 16 and up that come in here and have issues, I'm having like, it's just chronic problems when it comes to compression releases um flywheel magnets connecting rods it's just chronic issues so uh i think i'm just going to try and knock this thing off i've already sucked the oil back out of it and stuff like that and then shove that 18 horse on this or that um that one on that craftsman onto this and just be done with it Everything else is good on the mower. I need to have I need to have a reliable engine on this thing. And with me piddling around with these new Briggs, I don't think I'll ever have that on these. So let me work on that. The next time you'll see this, just because I'm honestly not really wanting to film anymore for right now, is when we get ready to start it with the new uh, engine on it. And uh, like I said, I know that one runs. So it's just a matter of getting it and uh, putting it in here. If y'all do small engine work, y'all have been here before. This is about as worse, worse as it's been for me when it comes to this. So, uh, let me work on this and I'll be, uh, I'll catch up with y'all when I get the new 18 or the new engine off of the Craftsman done and put on this. That way I can just be done with this and have a good reliable mower for somebody. We'll work on other engines for other projects later on. Um, like, I'm not really interested in seeing what the inside looks like right now, honestly. So, uh, I'll be right back. Alright guys, so, there's residuals of what was inside the engine. I figured y'all were curious enough and I just wanted to show it to y'all. And there's the remainder of the connecting rod. You can see all the junk and stuff still in here. I don't really see any, like, the lifters were working properly. I don't really see any reason why this did what it did. Let's see if I can get it out for y'all here. I just think oh, we're not going to reuse the block or anything, so obviously I'm not going to reuse any of this. So I don't see. I just think I I think that. The engine went it through the governor and whatnot originally on this. Got stressed. Well, I've got it torn apart and in pieces now. There's the crankshaft. And I'm not going to worry about rebuilding that or anything like that. So I honestly think the engine got stressed when it originally lost its first compression release and took the governor with it stripped the governor uh obviously we got this shrapnel here we have the governor here the governor's unscathed thankfully the brand spanking new compression release is not though so that's trash uh that's 30 bucks just so and i don't I, I really don't know i think i just got really unlucky because I've done many of these exactly like I just showed y'all. And they're still working today. And then this one right here is, uh, decided it wanted to blow. So I'm thinking, like I said, that it probably had a little bit of stress on it when it threw the compression release and the flywheel magnets. So... Uh, we'll go with that. That'll make me sleep better at night, I guess. I'll keep cleaning this stuff up, and I will grab 
that engine and pop it on here and we'll get this thing going again. Well, this is the reason why I cleaned my garage up. You'll see the four part series in the end of 2022 if you're watching this before then. So that I can just scatter a whole bunch of junk out as I'm working. Second engine is in. Oil's in it. Everything's on it. Let's crank it up. If this one blows up, I'm just going to walk inside the house and call it a day. better success than that other one smoke just rolling off of the exhaust where I've been messing with it that's no biggie uh, what I'm gonna do is grab all of the associated things that I need when it comes to um, fixing or uh, putting you know engine covers and stuff on it uh, put some blades on it y'all seen y'all seen me put blades on MTD mowers all the time and give it a good cleaning and I'll give y'all a final test and run and all that good stuff uh, just kind of over this mower honestly and uh, this video is starting to get pretty long y'all show I showed you all the work that I had to go through to get that first engine to run for a grand total of 15 seconds before it just so we'll get this one buttoned up cleaned up should turn out to be a nice mower. I'm still going to turn out good on this. I'm, I'm staying to make a few hundred dollars easy off of the trade deal that I made. So, we've got that to look forward to. But uh, basically set me back a day and an engine. Which, I mean, could have... That mower is going to scrap anyways. So, I'm taking the trans off and that's about it. After everything we've been through in this video, that's nice to see, isn't it? At least I think it is. So, that is the Troy built. I've got it listed for $650. We'll see if it sells this fall. If not, I'll take you off the tripod very quickly. We'll show you the engine. You can see that it did clean up really nicely for what it is. Um, for how it wasn't treated rough it was just used pretty good um, engine looks like it's supposed to be on there although I have denoted that it is a little bit of an older engine because it does have a little bit of smoke haze uh, when you first crank it up and when you turn when you first turn the blades on because it is almost 20 years old it's, I think that engine's got some hours on it but it works it works better than that one that blew up on camera right so um, 
a little bit of a bummer there, but we did get it back to working, running, and mowing condition. I have uh, cut the front, the entire front yard with it. It did, uh, it did good. And then I found that the blades had gotten uneven somehow, and so I had to do a little bit of um, deck work to get the blades back even. And I'm like, goodness gracious, is this thing ever going to be uh, fixed here? <laughs> and then I had to do the the MTD, you know, put it in high gear and let the brake out to let the belts catch. The belts are in good condition. I don't know why it did that yesterday when I got it out. Today it started and drove over here just fine, just to show the end of this video. My goodness, guys. Um, glad to be done with this one. I would love for it to sell this year. If not, it'll be a, one of my nicer ones to carry over until the 2023 season. Uh, so that's good. Uh, we're able to get that husk varna out of here that was in a previous video as well. So that was good as well. Um, pop it back in the uh, tent that I have set up outside. Again, I will have a video of the um, garage overhaul coming up here at the end of the 2022 year between Christmas and New Year's. If you'll want to join me to, uh, to see those videos and uh, we'll keep on cruising with these videos as well with fixing a Troy Belt riding mower. I'm doing good on it. I have $200 in it total. Um, not even that because I have a second rider back there that I got on a trade with a generator that I got on another trade of a generator that I got on another trade. <laughs> so this is like four trades deep here is what we're talking about now. It's just the way that it works. But I'll stop talking for this video. Again, we've gotten this four-year-old uh, Troy built going again and uh, should be good for the new owner, whoever buys it. Thank you all again for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, ellis at ellismowers.com or at ellismowers09 on Instagram and Facebook. And I'll catch y'all in the next video. See you then.